Okay, hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, today, uh, thank you all for coming to this uh, webinar on the foundations of corporate bond investing. So today, uh, I myself, Timothy Ang, the credit analyst uh, of Philip Research, and the bond desk of Philip Bonds will be here to answer your questions and to uh, help you all get uh, gain some knowledge on the corporate bond market and how it can help you to uh, build your recurring income and fixed income uh, for your for your financial goals. So I myself, I cover Asian bonds, the Asian market for bonds. And uh, we have Richmond from the bond desk. He's the head of the fixed income desk at Philip. And we have Andrew, who is the uh, bonds product specialist uh, at Philip Bond Desk. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's start this webinar. So just a disclaimer, today's uh, information is just for educational purposes only, not for investing ideas. And today's overview will be this. So the what and whys of corporate bonds and just a short credit outlook on the Singapore bond market. And then we'll cover some things to consider when you're buying bonds. And then we'll end by how to trade bonds. So firstly, what are corporate bonds? A corporate bond is simply a loan to a company. So you're sim simply lending your money to a company uh, for a promise of interest payments, regular interest payments to you, and the promise of you of the company paying you back your principal amount, your loan amount at a certain date. So as an example, we have here uh, ABC market, uh, ABC company bond is a 5% coupon bond. So if you lend $1,000 to this company that pays 5% every year, so every year you receive $50 from this uh, as interest payment from this company. And then at the end, you receive back your principal amount, $1,000. Right, so it's a very visible cash flow order uh, where you have very stable and, and promised interest payments to you, fixed income, and you get back your principal at the end. And so corporate bonds are great for income for bondholders. So they provide higher and stable income, meaning that they, pay, they can pay away much more attractive yields than your fixed deposits or your insurance endowments. And they promise your principal back at a certain date. And they promise the interest payments as well. Right? So it's all in a contract. It provide, it's, it's very stable and, and your cash flow is very visible. It's very, it's lower volatility. Uh, it's low, it has a lower volatility than stocks because your cash flows are more, uh, you, you have more, you can predict your cash flows more accurately. It's more liquid. There's a market for corporate bonds. You can sell it in the exchange. You can sell it over the counter to, to other people who want to buy it. It's a, there's a market for it and there's low penalty uh, for, for some of these bonds, right? Because uh, compared to your fixed deposits, like let's say if you want to cancel your fixed deposits early, uh, they'll, they'll probably, you know, cut some percentage of it or they'll reduce the, they won't pay you the interest. Uh. So there's quite a high high penalty for other fixed income um, products compared to corporate bonds. And there's opportunity for capital gain. So you, you can actually, the bond prices can actually increase in the market right? uh, compared to you know, your endowment plans or your fixed deposits where it's just, it's just a fixed, fixed uh, interest in return. And so this is just a demonstration of uh, the volatility of corporate bonds compared to stocks. So we're looking at the TRIH SFI corporate bond index for the Singapore bond market. So these are high grade bonds in the Singapore bond market. You can see that uh, the biggest drops in the market, right, for this for corporate bonds is usually around three percent. And during the COVID nineteen uh, crisis, the crash in COVID, uh, back in March, these high grade high grade uh, corporate bonds only fell three percent compared to the stock market, which fell over thirty percent. So you can see that uh, because of the strong cash flow visibility, uh, there's much lower volatility for corporate bonds. All right, so just, and now we'll just touch on a bit about the, the credit outlook, also on why we think that Singapore corporate bonds at the moment 
uh, look quite attractive. All right. The first reason why corporate bonds are attractive is because uh, we're expecting interest rates to remain low for a longer time. So we can see here that the market is actually predicting um, corporate bonds, I mean, sorry, the interest rates to remain around 0% for the foreseeable future. All right. So with lower interest rates in, in just lower interest rate environments, people are hungry for you, they search for you. And one of the best sources for fixed income for you is corporate bonds. So we see demand for corporate bonds to pick up slowly uh, as interest rates remain low. But, and, we, and, and also the other reason why interest rates will remain low, is it's just not conducive for central banks to increase interest rates at the moment because they, they want to keep interest rates lower to support the economy because now uh, the whole world is just contracting. Uh, the PMIs are just dropping all over the world due to COVID-19 and the unemployment rates are at historical highs. Uh, we, we might have to wait until you know, it reaches single digits in the US for unemployment rate before the Fed even thinks of increasing interest rates. So we think that uh, interest rates will remain low for, for a more longer time. But a more bigger reason why we think uh, Singapore dollar bonds are more attractive is because we think that Singapore government bond yields are going to fall in the coming future. And the Singapore government bond yields have been dropping already for the past six months, as you can see in, the, in, in this chart. So we're seeing uh, it, it's been dropping and, and the, the, shorter term, uh, the shorter term yields are really near zero already. Right? But the reason why we think that Singapore government bond yields are about to drop even more is because of two reasons. Right? One, the first reason is because Singapore government bond yields are much more attractive than the US Treasury yields at the moment. We can see in the chart here, uh, the, the red line is the yield of the, the Singapore bond, uh, government bonds. So compared to the, the US Treasury curve, the US Treasury yields, compared to the US Treasury yields, we can see that um, the, there is a premium. The Singapore government yields are much higher than the US Treasury yields. So that's one reason why we think that uh, there'll be more demand for the Singapore government bonds. And we think that the yields are going to drop further. The second reason is a more, is a more, um, it's a more prominent reason. So we know that this, the U.S. Federal Reserve and the U.S. government they're going to stimulate the economy, right? The U.S. government is going to take on a three trillion worth of debt for a three trillion fiscal package to save the economy, right? So if they, they're, they're looking to raise a lot more debt. And this compared to Singapore, Singapore has risen very little debt in this time because we've been tapping on our reserves. And so if the US is raising a lot of debt, we expect the yields to increase because uh, by taking on so much debt, we think that uh, the credit profile of the US would, would drop, they, would, they have much more debt. And so if we think that the US Treasury uh, interest rates are going to rise, current interest rates are, not, are less attractive. Right? So, and then we think that uh, people will shift, investors will shift over to the Singapore government bonds because the, the Singapore side is more attractive to the US Treasury side. So gradually we'll see more demand for the Singapore government bonds. And as the U, as the U of the Singapore government bonds uh, goes lower, then, we'll, then there will be more demand for corporate bonds, Sing dollar corporate bonds in Singapore. As people search, search further and wider for you, And the last reason why we think Singapore dollar corporate bonds look attractive now is because uh, the Sing dollar is 
we think that we expect the same dollar to strengthen against the US dollar. Two reasons why is because firstly, Trump wants a weaker US dollar to compete against China. His rhetoric against China is, uh, is quite harsh now. He's blaming them for the virus and this kind of things. And the second reason why is because the US Federal Reserve raised far more, has issued far more amounts of US dollars in their quantitative easing packages, far more than the other economies. So this actually will dilute the US dollar and will cause it to weaken. And so, if, so the strengthening Sing dollar will actually make Sing dollar assets look more attractive because on an exchange returns basis, they will gain on, you know, they will gain on the interest rate uh, returns on their corporate bonds and they'll gain on the Singapore dollar appreciation. So it's a carry trade. <clears throat> so three things that we think why the case, the bull case for Sing dollar bonds now is that because rates are going to remain low, we think that government, Singapore government bonds rates are going to fall even more and the, the Sing dollar is set to appreciate against the US dollar uh, simply because the US is pumping so much money into their economy, printing so much US dollars. Right, so uh, that covers why we think uh, Sing dollar corporate bonds look attractive now. So let, let's dive deeper into uh, what are corporate bonds, right? So bonds are like loans. Bonds and loans have terms, right? To loans have terms. So the terms of loans usually is, you know, how much you're going to lend. So that's the nominal principle of face amount. That's the amount that you're going to lend. The issue price, the price of the bond on the market. So at what price do you sell the bond at? The coupon rate that you, the rate of the coupon that you receive in interest. And uh, the dates where you expect the company to pay back. So the maturity date or the call date. And lastly, the yield. The yield is the returns, the annual returns that you expect from the bonds. Uh, and that, that really depends on what price you paid for the bond. If you paid a higher price for the bond, then, uh, then your returns will be lower. If you pay a lower price for the bond, then your, your returns will be higher. So the yield tells you why, why is your annual return. It calculates all that for you. So other than these terms, uh, there is ranking. So there's different types of ranking for bonds. And ranking determines uh, who, who gets paid out first, who, who gets money first uh, when the company is in default. So if the company is in trouble, who's, who's going to get their money back first? And the higher the ranking, the, the first, the earlier you get back your money. So the, higher, the highest rank is, is the senior secured bonds. And these bonds are secured to an asset like a building or machinery or some, some other asset. So the, you, if the company is uh, under trouble, then they'll sell the asset and you get the money first. Or you can get the asset itself. And then below that is the senior unsecured. So it's, it's similar, but just that this bond is not secured to an asset. And lastly, we have the junior and subordinated bonds. These are the lowest rank, usually rank just above shares. Uh, so they'll get paid out before the shareholders, but uh, around the, the later stage of the payment process. So just uh, some different rankings for bonds. And so that, those are the terms of the bonds. So there are different structures to bonds also in the market. So we'll just cover these. There are only three main types of bonds in Singapore. So there's a bullet bond, there's a callable bond, and then there's a perpetual bond. And these bonds differ in two aspects, two main aspects. So first is the tenor. So when do you get your money back? That's, that's one, one thing. And the second is your ranking. So uh, based on the safety, the safety uh, level. So for a bullet bond, the bullet bond is the simplest bond to understand. So it's just a simple loan. You just loan the company, let's say uh, 250K. 
and then you receive your interest payments. Let's say if it's 5% per annum, you get 6.25K per every semi-annually. And then at the maturity date, you get back your principal amount. So callable bonds are similar to bullet bonds, but just that they have a call date as well. The call date is simply, uh, it's a date where the company has the option to redeem the bond at an earlier date. So at the call date, they can choose to redeem your bond earlier. And if they choose to redeem it earlier, they'll just pay back your principal. And then the rest of the things, the rest of the interest is, is, uh, is no more. Lah. And then lastly is the perpetual bond. Uh, just as the name, the name meaning, the name means, uh, it can go on forever. It has no maturity date. It just has call date, which is the company just has the option to, to pay back only. It, they're not obligated to pay you back. So if at the first call date, uh, they, don't, they choose not to pay you back, then every six months, they'll have the option to pay you back. So every six months, they'll just keep on paying you your interest. And if they choose to call you back, uh, call back the bond or redeem the bond, then they'll just pay you back your principal. And so because uh, if you notice that the ranking for perpetual bonds is junior, perpetual bonds are always junior. So meaning that they, are, uh, they, they get paid out very late uh, when the company is in financial trouble. Lah. So usually perpetual bonds pay a higher coupon than the other bonds, the other higher ranking bonds. They pay, they pay a higher coupon. So this is an example. So we're looking at SPH. SPH bonds, so Singapore Press Holdings. So we can see that all, all their perpetual bonds are trading at a higher yield, around 4 to 4.5%, uh, higher than their bullet bond, which is the 3.2%. So it trades about 1% to 2% higher than the bullet bonds, uh, simply because perpetuals have a, have a lower safety structure to them. Okay, so that's the three main types of bonds. So we'll just cover some examples now. So the first example is a bullet bond. So this is a bond, FC, FCT 3.2% uh, maturing on the 11th of May, 2023. Uh, this is actually issued by Fraser Centerpoint Trust. So right now the bond is priced at 101. So that's 1% higher than the par. 1% higher than par. The coupon rate is 3.2%. It's a senior bond because it's a bullet bond. So you get, you get paid out earlier if the company's in trouble. Maturity date, 11 of May, 2023. And you look at the yield to maturity, which is the yield, the annual return that you can expect if you hold this bond until it matures. It's at 2.82% only. It's not 3.2. Because you paid a higher price for the bond. You paid 1% higher, 101. And that's why your, your returns are lower at 2.82. So how it works, so you pay... 252.5k uh, at the start for this wholesale bond. Not 250k, uh, but 252.5k because the ask price is higher. Then you get your interest payments, 4k, which is 3.2% on 250k. And then you get back the nominal amount, 250k at the maturity. So this is just a bullet bond. So next is the callable bond which is a bullet bond with a call date. So same thing, uh, ask price 100.6. The coupon rate for this, this bond is issued by Tuan Singh, a uh, property developer in Singapore. So the coupon rate is much higher because Tuan Singh is a, property development is quite cyclical. <coughs> it's more risky. So they have to pay a higher coupon rate to, to, to compensate for risk. 7.75%. <coughs> it has a maturity date 2022 and a call date 2021. And if you notice, if the company chooses to call back the bond earlier in 2021, they will pay you 102, 2% higher than your, than your principal amount. So, uh, so you're, if you notice that the yield to maturity is 7.56, which is slightly lower than the coupon rate because you're paying a slightly higher price than par 106, 100.6. But the yield to call, if they call back the bond, your returns will be higher, 9.06%, because they are paying you 102 at the call date. The price is higher if they call, <clears throat> if they call it earlier. So how it works, you pay 
251.5K, you get your interest payments every six months, which is 9.7K every six months. And then if the company chooses to pay you back, they pay you back 255K, which is like 102. And if they don't pay you back, you receive one more year's worth of coupons, and then they pay back the principal at 2022 May. So lastly is the Starhub 3.95% perpetual bond, perpetual, uh, the ask price is 100.2, and the coupon rate is 3.95%, uh, so it's subordinated. The call date is on, on 2022, and the yield to call is 3.75, slightly lower than the coupon rate 3.95. So how this works, you pay, 250.5k, you receive your interest payments and maybe your principal back on 2022. If not, it continues forever until the company chooses to redeem it back. So I hope that that clarifies the structures of the bonds. <clears throat> the three main structures of bonds they are issued in Singapore. So Right now, uh, we covered mostly what we what corporate bonds are, what their structures are, what their terms are, right? It's simply a loan. So what are the considerations that bondholders usually look for when investing in bonds? So what is a good bond, right? A good bond is 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 gives you value. It gives you a valuable yield. So uh, is the yield attractive to you? Is it paying above 4%, 5% around there? Are you looking at that yield? And is this bond paying a higher yield than similar bonds in the market? So we use val relative valuation to see whether the bond is, is cheaper or more expensive in the market. And that's, how you, and that's how you scout for value. And that's one way to scout for value in the market. And the second thing is safety, right? Whether the company can pay you back your principal. So we look at debt ratios. Uh, we look at the debt maturity profile, financial covenants, sponsors, assets. And look at a lot of things, uh, bank facilities, business models. But uh, we'll touch on this later. I'll touch a bit on this later, but uh, what, what's prominent now, right, is the sponsor stakeholders aspect to safety. We we saw we saw Thomasic Holdings, right, which owns over fifty percent of Singapore Airlines. So Singapore Airlines was uh is it's not really a it's not really in good shape now, but it doesn't and and so that's why a very strong stakeholder, a very strong sponsor is 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 key. Uh. It helps, it really helps when a company is in trouble. Thomasic Holdings came in. And right now, all the bondholders of SIA, SIA has a lot of bonds. So all the bondholders are safer, are safe because of Tomasic. And another thing is, another example is HDB. HDB loses actually billions of dollars every year, building all your cheap HDB flats. But their bonds are priced so low still, priced at 1% plus, 2% plus, because they are backed by the Ministry of Finance. So they are as strong as the Singapore government, basically. So that's uh, why sponsors are quite important when assessing the risks of bonds. So assessing a safety, the safety of bonds, right? Here's an example. So we use SPH, and we're using their historical data. So uh, it may not be true at the moment for this time being. Uh, so right now, for safety, we usually look at a few ratios. So we look at the debt levels, debt to asset levels. We look at the cash to short-term borrowings to see whether they can pay off their short-term loans, if they have enough cash to pay off their short-term loan. And we look at the earnings over interest expense. Is, it, is the company earning enough to pay off the interest on its loans? So we can see that SPH in, in 2019, they really had quite healthy credit ratios. They had low, debt to asset ratios are below 30%. They had enough cash to pay off their short-term borrowings, more than enough, 1.35 times their short-term borrowings. And they earn 6.1 times more than the interest expense that they are paying. So uh, it's pretty healthy from uh, the credit ratios. 
So next thing we look at is really the business. Is the business able to generate enough money to pay off your loans in the future, to pay off your interest expense in the future? So one way to look at it is the business model. So right now, if you look at it, SPH is no longer a, news, a newspaper a media company anymore. They, their profits, more than 80% come from property which you can look at it as cyclical or recurring business model, really. Uh, but that's how you really determine uh, whether, whether or not uh, the cash flow will be more, will be more um, visible in the future by looking at the business model. And lastly, uh, you're looking at the debt maturity, whether they have like a big block of debt that is going to mature very soon, whether they can have trouble paying it off or not. And you can see that, you know, even as SPH has a lot of cash to pay off the debt, we can see that only 21% of debt matures in one year. So there's very low short-term liquidity risk for SPH. So after you, uh, after you, after you um, determine if the company is safe, right, then let's say you're interested in SPH bonds. Then you look at SPH bonds. Right? You look at which bond is, is trading cheaper than the rest. Which bond is more value, right? You can see which bond is paying the higher yield for, for a shorter duration of holding. Right? Is the SPH 4.5% perpetual. It pays about 4.5% 4, 4 yield. It's cheaper, it pays a higher yield than the rest of the perpetuals that much, uh, have call dates near, 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 the, near the similar bond. Uh. So, in a way, we can call it cheaper. The 4.5% per is trading cheap in the market. Of course, this is historical data, so uh, don't rely on this. So those are two ways. So those are the two ways that you, the common two things that people look at when they trade bonds, right? Is the safety and the value. And these are some ways that you can look at it. Okay. And uh, just want to finish off. Uh, with the last portion, which is how to trade corporate bonds. Because corporate bonds, I know there's two types. There's retail corporate bonds and then there is uh, wholesale corporate bonds. Retail is the one that is trading on the exchange. It's trading like stocks, like shares. You can buy and sell on the exchange. You can see the live prices. Uh, it's traded in a lower lot size, 1K. Lower lot size, uh, but for those of you that are looking to invest more into this to, to get more fixed income, then you'll, you'll be looking at the wholesale bond market uh, for more liquidity, for more higher value uh, of, of, of purchases, a higher volume, a higher uh, level of purchases for more liquidity in the, the wholesale market. And the wholesale market trades over the counter, so it's different to, to trading retail bonds in, in the exchange. So two types of bonds, retail bonds and wholesale bonds. We'll be covering wholesale bonds now. Uh, retail bonds are just traded just like stocks, no difference. So wholesale bonds traded over the counter is really reliant on connections. Connections to counterparties. So counterparties, you have to really have connections to people who want to buy and sell. It's not an exchange. You have to go and find a person who wants to buy and sell. So it works differently. But the first step to... To, to buying corporate bonds is uh, obviously to open a trading account. Uh, you can open a points trading account. We have, a, we have a bond desk that covers the global bonds and we specialize in the Sing dollar bond market. So you can open an account online over the, in, in the points website or you can just scan this QR code uh, to, 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 to bring you to that link. Uh, we'll show the, the, the QR code later as well. So let's move on to the second step. The second step is how to get a quote. So your, your, your account will take about one to three days to open, one to three business days. So after it's open, uh, it's time for you to just look for the bond that, that you're interested in. Which bond is tra trading cheap? Uh, which bond looks attractive? What was the yield and this kind of things? And because wholesale bonds are traded OTC, the prices are not live. They are not like stock prices. It's not live prices. You can see it moving. Uh, you really have to get quotes from a counterparty. 
And so the best way to get a quote is to get in touch with us. It's really true connection. Uh, it's really uh, the best way to get through it is through just speaking to our fixed income desk, right? Because they have the connections to the uh, the counterparties, direct connections, and you can get the the most indicative, the most uh, the most accurate prices. The second way is to get through your financial advisor. So then they will help you to, to get a quote for you from the fixed income desk. And lastly, we have uh, quotes, bond quotes online as well on our Polings 2.0 uh, platform, but we won't be covering it today. Uh, you, uh, you can contact your financial advisor for, to learn more about this, on how to go about trading bonds online and looking at the prices. So these are the three ways uh, to get prices for wholesale corporate bonds that are traded OTC over the counter. So we'll guide you on, a, we'll send you the whole list of the bonds and uh, we'll help you to, to determine which one is cheaper, which one is trading uh, cheaply, which one is more attractive uh, based on your criteria, what's your yield that you're looking for. So after you get your bond quotes, after you get your bond quotes, then comes the placing and order. So placing an order is different to, uh, it, it can be different, it can be different to stocks, meaning that you can place the order uh, just by giving us a call. All right, we just confirm the order over the phone for you. Or, or you can drop us an email, drop your financial advisor an email. Uh, you can, and you can also place an order online uh, for bonds. So, uh, for more, but for, for placing orders online, uh, the orders will be tracked by our fixed income desk. So it's more of a OTC kind of process. But overall, it can be done online, it can be done over the phone. Uh, so these are, the, these are the main ways to go about trading bonds. And it's, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, it's very similar to stocks in the past over the counter. So these are the ways to treat bonds. So in summary, really, uh, so we can open the, 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 the webinar for Q&A. Uh, bonds are loans to companies, basically. Corporate bonds are just loans to companies. And there are different types of loans, different types of bonds. So bullet bond, callable, perpetual, different structures that are, uh, they have different safety levels. They have different uh, payment levels. Uh, when when they pay you back, this kind of things, and and when you're going about choosing a bond, you have to firstly determine the safety of the bond, looking at you know debt levels, sponsors, business models, this kind of things, and then to de uh, determine the value of a bond, whether it's attractive to the similar bonds. And lastly, when you want to trade, uh, get in touch with us. For, for the most accurate and the most, uh, the most fastest way is to get in touch with us because bonds are, wholesale bonds are traded over the counter. Okay, so that's it for an overview on the bond market and corporate bonds. Uh, we'll, just open the, we'll just open the floor for some q and I'll just read off some questions. And uh, we'll get some, uh, we'll get Richmond and Andrew on the line uh, to to help to answer your questions. They are from the fixed income desk. So let's see. Let, look at the questions. Uh, first question will be: May I know where you get the graph for the SGS and USD curve? Okay, this one you need to get it from uh, the Bloomberg terminal. So it's it, it's it's not really uh. This one, you can get it online as well, but we get the data from our Bloomberg terminal. Okay, next question is, what, com what companies are very risky now and what is avoid? I read about Him Yong and High Flux and I'm scared now. Okay, it's a, Him Yong and High Flux, right? Him Yong is more of the fraud. La. So that one, you really, it's really hard to determine. Uh, whether a company is, is performing fraud or not. So that one, I can't really answer. 
But for high flux, you can actually see it. You can see their cash flow for high flux. So for several years, they had really negative cash flow. It's because they, they, they had, they had higher expenses for their twasing, uh, the the power generation plant, and that's why the cash flow was negative. But also another thing, another point about high flux is that their their assets were worth less than what they were. The, the, the market, they, they, weren't a, they were not able to sell the assets at a, a reasonable price because their assets are more like power plants and this kind of things. And because the assets are loss making, so it's hard for them to sell it off. And that's the thing about high flux. Though. So if you're looking at really companies that are risky now, uh, I would say it, I would say you have to look at the industries lah. They are affected by COVID nineteen, so you can probably look at uh, hospitality or tourism related uh, industries. They are more affected. The rest, like the telcos and the banks, and and the REITs, right? The REITs actually have a. The REITs actually have more recurring income. So a Sanders REIT still has their, their, their rental income and these kind of things and they'll be able to pay off your interest expenses. So those, those are still quite stable. Okay, next question. Can you show the slide example for FCT SP again? Okay, this is it. It's a bullet bond. Okay, next question is, can you explain again the payout earlier if company is in trouble? Does this refer to bullet bonds? What does it mean the company pay bonds payout first? Okay, what, what I mean, right, is, okay, let me just scroll back. So there are different rankings to bonds. So bullet bonds are usually senior bonds. And then perpetual bonds are usually subordinated bonds. So what this means is that the higher up you you are in the rank, so if you the more senior you the more senior you are, the higher chance you get back your money if the company uh is goes bankrupt because they will pay you whatever money that they have first before they pay the lower ranking ones. So when I'm talking about when the company is in trouble, who will get paid out first? It's really when the company is liquidation, you know bankrupt these kind of things but when normal interest payments right in a normal business environment every, everybody will get paid everybody will get paid okay taking your example on fct sp earlier which one is more secure comparing fct bond versus fct reits of course the fct bond is more secure in the payment you're more guaranteed the payment right because fct actually cut their dividends if, I think they cut it by 50%. So if you're talking about payout, right? Uh, FCT's bonds, the payout is much more visible. They have to pay you the coupons. Whereas if you're talking about REITs, they can actually, you know, don't pay, don't pay you dividends. Uh. So the other one is more secure. Uh, so, and if you're talking about if FCT touch wood, if they go bankrupt, who will get paid out first? Of course, the FCT bondholders will get paid out first. So overall, the bonds are more secure than the REITs, the REIT, the, the REIT shares. Okay, next question. Why do you say construction bonds have higher coupon because it's risky industry? REITs are also construction, but it's safe, right? Or is it construction is industry generally risky? Uh, REITs are not construction. REITs are owners of buildings. They don't have to spend money on <clears throat> building it. They don't have to uh, sell any of their buildings, develop this kind of things. So they're not, they only rely on the rental income, which is more stable. So construction bonds and REIT bonds, they are, they are different. And construction bonds are more, are more, are more cyclical in a way because they have to, only when the economy is good, then they can sell their properties, right? Yeah, so more cyclical. You're putting a case for investors to purchase SGD bonds versus USD bonds, assuming investors are USD denom. Would this argument also apply for Euro-Yen? Thanks. 
Okay, I didn't say that US dollar bonds are are, are bad. <laughs> uh, US dollar bonds are still attractive in China. <laughs> not not they're they're quite attractive in China still. It depends on where you're looking at it. <clears throat> so the argument for Euro Yen is really I can't say. You have to really look at the country itself. Okay, why you say SIA bonds in trouble, but the Masek save them? Even if company is in trouble, they must pay out dividend, right? Even if a company goes bankrupt, still must pay bond dividends, right? No. Uh, if the if SIA was not saved by Tamasic, they will probably default, and that means that all the bonds will, will they they don't they won't receive any payments because SIA can't pay for them. So, so when a company is in trouble. Uh, one way that you can that the bondholders can be safe is when someone steps in to save the company. And in this case for SIA, it was the Masik. <clears throat> okay, next question. Can I explain again the first example of 101 on to the investment value of 252k and how do you compute the returns and yield? Okay, uh, we're looking at it now, right? So the FCT bond, the Freezer's commercial uh, Freezer's center point trust bond. So 101 is the price that you the market is selling you at, but the par value, the IPO price of the bond, the par value is 100. So basically you're paying 1% higher than the par value. The par value is 250K. So how do we get 252K? 252.5K uh, actually. It's just, you know, take 1% of 250K. Add 1% to 250K. And how do you compute the returns and yield? So the returns, the yield to maturity is quite a complicated uh, calculation. So not to worry, we, uh, our system and our, our bond desk will be able to calculate it for you. Or you can go to online to, to calculate the, they have calculators online also. Okay, next question. <clears throat> Since you mentioned SIA bonds, what will happen if SIA defaulted? Does the Masek absorb these SIA bonds? If Tamasek doesn't want to save SIA, then Tamasek will lose their money on the SIA bonds. Just like High Flux lost money on the on their bonds, all the High Flux bondholders lost all their money. Uh, same thing for SIA bonds. If SIA defaults, all the bondholders will just lose their money. Okay, question two. When, why did bond price fall on the secondary market when interest rates fell? Bond price should rise, right? Yes, bond prices should rise when bond uh, when interest rates fall, but because the economy was bad, so the whole market also fell. Because these bonds are from corporations, right? So if the corporations cannot earn enough money in the, in the, in this COVID nineteen environment, then the bonds become more risky. So the the prices will definitely inc uh, de decrease to to reflect that the more riskiness. So you, it's not just based on interest rates, but also market conditions and whether the company is able to pay off the bond. How to subscribe to bonds at time of launch? Become an accredited investor. In that case, bonds are bought at 250K lots. Sorry about the terminology, probably all wrong. Okay, subscription to bonds at, at launch. Okay, you to subscribe to bond at launch, right? It, it's best that you subscribe to our bond mailing list. So because bond IPOs are quite are quite fast, uh, they, they pass by quite fast. So you have to be alerted quite quite quickly la, in order to in order to catch it in time. So you just scan this QR code here to subscribe to uh, Philip Capital Bond Desk mailing list. Right? If you can scan it with your, your phone app or you can email us at bonds at philip.com.sg and we'll let you know if there's any bond IPOs. Uh, the ordering the ordering process is the same. So you just let us know that you want to buy it. You just let your, your financial advisor know. Uh, become an accredited, accredited investor. So accredited investor is basically a, a, a declaration where it allows you to purchase wholesale bonds. So if you become an accredited investor, you need to fulfill some requirements, a certain level of income or a certain level of financial assets in your name. So there'll be a form that we, we have. You just email us for the form or you can call us. Okay. 
How about corporate bonds funds? Is it better? Okay, the difference between corporate bonds and corporate bond funds is corporate bond funds, they do not promise you your principal back. Right? So if the prices fall for corporate bond funds, you cannot say, you cannot wait until a specific date and then the company pays you back your principal amount at par. You, you have to wait, I don't know how long for the corporate bond fund price to reach back to your normal level to get back your principal. It's just, it just become a, like a normal stock. So that's the, that's the, that's the difference uh, between corporate bond funds and normal corporate bonds. Next question, what is your opinion of ARA Perpetual? I cannot give any opinion in this uh, webinar. So, but ARA Perpetual, uh, ARA, it has good sponsors, I can tell you that. Uh, Warburg Pinkers and uh, John Dim. So that's one good thing about them. Uh, okay, I'll let Richmond just answer some questions. Oh, uh, um, Andrew, are you there? Okay, never mind. I'll just answer. Okay, uh, are you on? Oh, yeah, hi, sorry. Yeah, Timothy, I'm here. Yeah. Any okay, question uh, you'd like me to answer? Yeah, okay. Uh, are we still on other custodian accounts? Any platform fees, custodian fees? Uh, yes, we still bond an under custodian account. Uh, there's no platform fee, but there's some charges. But we have a new account type called a cash plus account. If you meet certain criteria like AUM, uh, we will waive off all the so called uh, our quarterly fee and all the dividend handling fee. Okay, is, is CDK four point percent a combo of bond? Any step up? Uh, this one we will answer. You can. You can email us and we will answer you there. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, Richmond, what are the charges for the corporate bond of 250? Okay, for us, uh, uh, okay, for us, as we, if you happen to go to Poyons 2.0 or bond tab, we show a bid offer price for, price for sing dollar bonds. So the price that you see is what you will get already. And you can even state your own target price. Okay, of course, not too far off from it. Lah. If, let's say you are saying 100.5, of course, you can put 100.45, 100.4. We will try to work towards the target, target by negotiating with the seller. So other than that, so basically, you will get the price that will fill your order. But uh, however, for buyer, you still need to pay accrued interest and seller, you, need to, you will receive accrued interest. Okay, next question. What if I do not have the capital for wholesale bonds? I only have to be paid. Uh, this one, you just, uh, you have to buy retail bonds instead. Okay, is the interest taxable? No, the interest is not taxable on sing dollar bonds. Is there a minimum threshold for wholesale bonds? Yes, 250K. What are the charges for bonds? If, uh, Richmond, what are the charges for bonds? Charges for bonds. Okay, basically for new issuance, uh, okay, uh, for us, our firm is that uh, if there's no uh, so-called rebate given by the issuer, we will charge 0.25%, okay, which will add 25 cents to your, if there's a rebate given by the issuer, uh, you might just pay the par value only. So for secondary market, as answered earlier, so basically it will be the price that uh, you will see on screen or your target price. If the seller decides to sell higher, we will advise you accordingly to see whether you like to adjust your price or not. So basically, we don't do any additional markout. The price we agree on is what you will get. Okay, does one need to be an accredited investor to buy wholesale bonds? Uh, yes, actually, wholesale bonds are open for AI investors. Yeah. So for Singapore, uh, as you can go to web page, uh, there's an AI declaration inside. Okay, you can go there to declare. Anything, feel free to contact us and we'll advise you accordingly. Okay. Uh, is China copper bond safe? Uh, you have to look at the company itself. So some of it is really safe, like the tech companies. Okay, next question. Why are some bank wholesale copper bonds trading below par now? Okay, most of the... Okay, uh, I think during the March 23rd, 24th period, uh, there's panic selling. 
So people are selling everything that has a bid on it, which means they're selling everything that has a buyer. But right now, today, I think if you will look into all the sing dollar, perpetual bonds, uh, bank bonds especially, all are worth hard already. UOB, OCBC, everyone above power, except for European banks, which are still trading below par, but they are going towards par already. Stand chart was trading below 90 uh, in March, but right now it's 96, 95 level now. So basically, there's panic selling. Lah. And for those smart investors, they pick up at a decent, at a very good yield. So someone lost or someone else gain. Okay. Uh what is the cost? What is the main difference compared to government bond? So government bond pays very low yield, about 1% plus only. The cost is that we don't have, we don't charge you commissions. Uh, we only charge you a spread. And the spread is about 25 cents. Okay. Well, retail bond payout coupon like wholesale bond, what would be good bond index fund to consider? Thanks. Yes, retail, retail bonds payout coupon are exactly the same as wholesale bonds. Uh, what? I don't have a good bond index fund to consider at the moment. What, what is the prerequisites for companies to raise perpetual debt? Okay, no prerequisites is the same. It's the same prerequisites as normal any corporate bonds. The risk for, for perpetual bonds is that uh, you may not expect to receive your principal back if the company doesn't call back the bond at the call date. So there may be some tenure risk whereby you have to hold the bond for a longer time. And uh, there are other risks for perpetuals as well, uh, such as the rank, the rank is lower. What about the rating of these corporate bonds? Uh, that Singapore bonds usually are not rated. So, but there are some who are rated investment grade. But they do not have to be rated. It's not compulsory to be rated. If Singapore interest going lower to negative, will bond price go up more? Why? Uh, yeah, it really depends, you know. It really depends. Uh, if it goes to negative, uh, it may be another crisis, you know. <laughs> So, if there's another another crisis, then it may impact the economy and this kind of thing. Then, uh, bond prices may actually go down uh, if the economy is bad, but less volatile than stocks. And you're still and you're still promised your coupon payments as long as the company doesn't default. What is suspension of trading put and change of control put? So these these are just provisions in the in the terms of a bond. So these are more special provisions. So suspension of trading put is when the company that is listed stops trading, is suspended for a number of days. Then the, the, bond, the bond holder has the option to sell the bond back to the company at par. And change of control put is when someone takes over the company or you know, there's a change of control in the company, shareholders, significant change. Then the bond holders has the option to sell back the bonds also to the company at par. Why are bank bonds junior subordinated, unstable, and have assets to back them? Uh, Richmond? Yeah, uh, okay. Sorry, I was muted accidentally. Okay, so for bank bonds, uh, there's many tier of capital by the banks. Uh, so basically, when they issue raise their perpetual bond, uh, as they are called perpetual, uh, which means they rank the last. And uh, there's a misconception that bank bonds are very safe. On the other hand, uh, you talk about structure-wise, right? For bank perpetual, actually, there's a clause inside. We say that our central bank can ask the bank itself to write off partially or fully your investment without going to a default. So basically, the main aim is to save the depositor. Of course, bank have their senior bond, which trade at even very low yield, which doesn't make a difference from a fixed deposit. So for a perpetual bond, they give you a slightly higher yield, but you face the risk of being a write-off in the event there's a bank run. So to prevent a bank run, they'll write off the debt first. Yeah, before the bank run. So structure-wise, right, uh, for banks, there's this clause, like, you have to be careful. Okay. Uh, isn't investing in REITs better than copper bond? REIT yield is much higher than copper bond, isn't it? Yes, but the REIT price can drop. The REIT share price can drop, and it can drop, and they don't promise you your principal back. And they don't promise you a dividend yield, so they can just cut. 
Oh, well, if the business is their yeah, rental income drop, the dividend must drop. Okay, how and where to find the historical triple A corporate SG bond yield in June? Oh, um, SGX. SGX. That is the, the index fund. The, the, the index for corporate bonds. Can you show the slide on SPH financial analysis and explain again? Uh, this one you can. This one probably will take too long. So, um, maybe you can email it to us, email the question to us, and we'll answer it there. It's five bill six six percent per, perpetual bond. Yes, it is. If not called within three years, any step up? No, there's no step up. Read, read perpetual bonds usually have no step up. If we set up the three years, the compound will likely be lower, right? Yes, it will be lower. If so there's no incentive for comp uh, yes, there's no incentive. But uh, recently we're saying that companies are still calling back the bonds, even though it's setting low. Will FIA bond recover after COVID nineteen? What type of SA bond what, what type of bond FIA offering now? Till May twenty twenty. Uh, SIA bonds already recovered. Because the market stepped in to to pay this. Uh, the SIA has a lot of bonds. Mostly are all bullet bonds. Okay, why MES and SGX do not intervene or signal when companies like High Park are issuing too many bonds while their revenue and assets are falling? Due to this non-intervention, many people have been hurt badly. Uh, yeah, it's it, it basically invest investor um, due diligence. No, I can't speak for SGX. How to determine how much is the total value of a bond fund? Can a company still issue one their liability already exceeds assets? Uh, yes, but that would be a very dangerous level uh, if their liability already exceeds assets. Uh, but it depends on what kind of company you can do. If it's a tech company that has very little assets, then we have to see you know, how much is the company worth and this kind of thing, and whether they can generate income. Could you talk about extra bonds, PE asset but back bonds in the current economic environment? Uh, Astria is uh, a company owned by Tamasic, if I'm not wrong. So they have very big reserves, if I'm not wrong, for this uh bond. But I'm not too sure, I can't advise it. I can't advise on it as well. Uh, maybe we'll take five more questions because we already ran over time. So, any of you that want to ask uh, your questions, want an answer to your questions, you can contact us at our email here, uh, bonds at philip.com.sg. Or you can contact us at 6212-1818 and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you. Okay, we need to take the CKA assessment before we can buy stocks. Do we need to take the same assessment before buying bonds? Uh, which one are you able to? Uh, you don't need if you're an AI investor, credit investor. Was told can get loan to buy corporate bond. If yes, what is the interest? Uh, Richmond. Yeah. Sorry, can you repeat the question again? Uh, what was told can get loan to buy corporate bond. If yes, what is the interest? Okay. Uh, that one will be our bond financing scheme already. So basically, right now we offer sing dollar financing for. Uh, at 2.68%. Uh, LTV for bonds can be up to 70. So basically, zero LTV, 50 or 70%. Yeah. So understand the interest rate is going lower now. Uh, I think our firm is looking at maybe uh, revising the rate, but nothing is firm yet. We will keep you updated. Lah. Okay. The current interest rate is about 2.68%. Okay. Uh, do companies globally usually raise in Sing dollar or US dollar? Do Sing dollar companies usually raise in Sing dollars? Uh, yeah, Sing dollar companies usually raise in Sing dollars because they spend in Sing dollars. Uh, companies globally they can raise either either one. Is buying bond unit trust safer than single corporate bond? Yes, it's safer in terms of diversification. Uh, but with regards to getting a principal back, uh, no. What are some good bond ideas currently? This one you have to email us to get uh, our, our, our bond idea. 
what under what conditions can a company keep interest payments for a bond? Uh, for the for the high for the higher ranking bonds, right? They can't keep. If they skip, then it's really just a default already. Whereas for the lower ranking bonds, they can defer the interest. So some some of them have provisions that allow them to defer. Uh, if they defer, sometimes they have to pay back at a later date, but sometimes they can just cancel it altogether. So it depends on what 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 the bond structure, what the bond terms are. Uh, usually these these terms, the, the deferment kind of bonds, they are usually subordinate to lower ranking ones. What role does SGX perform over the oversight of corporate bond market? Uh, which one do you know? Okay, for retail bond, I think it will be similar to equity, which uh yeah, which there there will still be gaps also. So for wholesale bond, uh, not really, yeah, because even though a wholesale bond actually wholesale bond are listed on SGX also, it's just a listing, uh, which they don't trade on the retail market. Uh, so actually SGX don't do anything; they just collect the listing fee only. That's all. So basically, most importantly, is your money. So do your own duty before you invest in anything. Make sure you're comfortable with the issuer. Okay, uh, last two questions. Uh, my understanding is that bank tier 1 should be above 5%. What is the usual trigger point for COCO to be converted? Uh, this one you can just email us. We will answer you there in the email. And two more questions. Any difference in calling in to buy versus buying via Poems 2.0? What are the charges for purchases via the different channel? Anywhere to search for it? Uh, Richmond? You know? Okay, for wholesale bond, okay, for retail bond, it will be the similar to your equity brokerage. Uh, so online will be cheaper and offline, a dealer assistant will be uh, higher charges. So for wholesale bond, right, be you do it online or offline, it will be the same charges because the price will go be net to you already. Okay. Is US bond earnings subjected to US tax? Just like share on dividend payout. Uh, which one do you know? Okay, uh, so far, okay, so far for US, okay, for all the foreign bonds, uh, basically they are kept by our custodian bank. Okay, so whatever amount we receive from our custodian bank, we will pay out to you. So far, US domestic bond or even US bond less than US, we don't face any taxes, but we do face before like those, uh, like we not, yeah, so from France, so Europe, there's some taxes. Uh, because they are deducted as source already, so there's nothing we can do. So whatever left over, we will give up to you. And the tax rules are quite complicated also. Yeah. So if you are still uncomfortable, stick to sing dollar bond. And if you invest sing dollar bond as an individual, you are not taxable unless you you invest unless you trade as a business. Okay. Uh. So. Uh, we'll just we'll just about over short the time really. So we'll just end the webinar here. Any of your questions that are unanswered, you can just drop us an email at bonds.com.sg and you can just take a screenshot of these QR codes and uh, our telephone number also just to uh, get in touch with us. So thanks everyone for joining us for this webinar. Uh, and uh, we we'll hope to see you again in the, in the future in the future webinar. Thank you. Thank you.